Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Rick here with theCUBE. We are live at Pier 48 in San Francisco at the GE Mines and Machines show. About 3,000 people all involved with Big Iron. And this, this isn't big data center iron, this is like Big Iron, Big Iron. Um, and we're getting, we've talked to a lot of GE folks, but we're really excited to have a practitioner on um, who's basically taken the leap of faith in this, in this whole world. And so we'd love to welcome Susan Landall, this, uh, an SVP at Exxon Generation. That's right. Welcome. Thank you. So, give us a little bit on Exxon for people that aren't uh, familiar with the company. All right. Exxon is a fully integrated utility company. We have uh, about 10 million customers. We have 37,000 uh, megawatts of generation. So we have we have nuclear generation, we have gas, solar, wind, hydro. So it runs the gambit. So we have we have the the generation piece of the business. We have the sales piece of the business, and then we have the the actual distribution of electricity to our customers. So my role at Exelon is I'm in the nuclear division, part of the generation company, and I have um, a background in engineering and operations. And my current role, one of my responsibilities is to be the lead executive for innovation within the nuclear organization. So that's why I'm here and that's why I'm involved with GE and Predix. So were you in that role when the nuclear uh, generation was kind of growing? Uh, yes, I've been almost 30 years in nuclear power of one type or another. I've worked for Exelon for 17 years, so I've run um, our plants and been in a number of senior positions there. So I really come from that engineering operations background, but now I'm in you know the new world of, of digital technology, which is pretty different than right. the world I grew up in. So big announcement, uh, we heard yep. from Ganesh earlier today uh, that you guys signed a strategic right. deal that you're going to be basically buying GE software, right? That's right, Not that's G right. I mean, you probably yeah. already own a bunch of their we, physical, we, physical plant. We do, we but, do. So this is this is very different. Um, I think, you know, we we really strive for excellence in all aspects of our operation, and there are a lot of things where Exelon really is an industry leader, but we're always looking for what's the next thing that's going to improve our performance, and when we look at the possibility of you know, digital technology, especially the idea of being able to predict events, you know, and be able to you know, predict the failure of a piece of equipment before it actually fails and go in and, and fix it ahead of time. And you, and you think about all those possibilities, that's sort of the next big step for us to continue our improvement. And GE being the technology leader that they are, coupled with ourselves as, you know, excellent in operations, made a really, sensible partnership, so that's where kind of the, the concept that, that bore the Predix deal for us. Right, and and when you decided to do this with GE yeah. and with Predix specifically, were you able to do kind of an ROI analysis? Was yeah. it kind of a leap of faith? We know we have to start yeah. doing some things and this is a well, way to get started. What was yeah, kind of the process we, that you guys we, went through? We thought there was great potential, so we, we went into an arrangement where we did five different pilots across our business units. So each one, it was, it was uh, you know, wind, power generation, nuclear, and we, we each looked at possible use cases would be the term that GE would use. Um, you know, what, what are things we could get out of Predix, and is there enough there that makes sense to actually proceed? So through that pilot process, we saw you know, some real value that we've already been able to recognize, and then we saw some huge potential going forward. So the, the decision to actually enter into the agreement was really based on the results of those pilots really bearing fruit and saying, hey, this, this has great potential to take you know, our performance in terms of efficiency in particular to the next level. Right, and then, and then you'll actually implement it through a, a series of of, uh, of specific projects. That's, that's and, and right. Tasks. That's right. And then, so once you know, we're we're pursuing each of the pilots, and in, in some cases, they will clearly, um, you know, kind of get finalized, and then we'll roll them out. Like in the case of of our nuclear fleet. If we implement a, a program at a particular site and it works, then we're just going to roll it through the rest of the fleet so we'll get that benefit. And then as new projects, because as you know with these kind of technologies, as soon as you start using it, it's like, well, we could do this and we could do that. And, right. and as each of those ideas come through, then we have to say, hey, is this really where we want to um, invest in terms of our next project beyond these pilots and, and we'll do an in, you know initial or an additional cost benefit analysis at that point, more to decide what's next though. Right. 
Yeah. It's interesting on the nuclear side because we think of, I think of nuclear as relatively sophisticated technology, yep. highly regulated, yes. you know, it's, it's, it's potentially dangerous, it also generates a lot of electricity. So, you know, I would think you guys had it pretty well nailed and yet you see this uh, huge opportunity for new levels of yeah. efficiency and new levels of output. Yeah. Where was the inefficiency that you're now squeezing well, more out? I, we, we have focused very much on safety and reliability, and we have a, an excellent safety record and an excellent reliability record. At Exelon, for the, the past 10 years, our capacity factor, so the percentage of time our plants are running, consistently 93, 94%, which is the best in the industry. So. We think from a safety and reliability perspective, we were doing very well, but there's always uh, ways to be more efficient. You know, can you, can we collect a lot of data, can we use it to be even more reliable, even, you know, more efficient with the people that run our plants and make their jobs easier as well as, as make, you know, the actual output of their work more effective. So. In, in nuclear, it's really more around the efficiency, and, and we are we are the lowest cost generator in the country, but we're always looking to be better, and you know, especially if it makes people's lives easier at the same time. Right, right. And this concept of the digital twin, I'm sure this has been part uh, of your conversation. A little bit. Uh, just a little a bit. A little bit. <laughs> Not going to yeah. have a digital twin of a yeah, big uh, yeah. cooling no, tower. No, but it's an interesting concept. Yeah, yeah. that seems uh, to be a big piece of it. Well, I think, um, Certainly, when you talk about the equipment at the plant, the idea is, you know, can you create this virtual twin that looks on, you know, that's made of electrons instead of iron and steel, but can um, capture the information that the actual piece of equipment, you know, contains and sees, and then use it to make decisions. So I think it's, um, it, it's a very interesting concept, and anytime you talk about really being able to use the technology to make the equipment run better, that digital twin idea is kind of a natural outcome, but it's a, a pretty, it's it's an attention getting name for it, I think. Right, right. I'm just curious for your perspective as, as, as the energy landscape just yeah. seems to be changing so dramatically now, yep. and you've been in the business for a long time. Yep. And again, nuclear, I grew up in Portland, so the Trojan plant was, uh, we used to take field trips yep. when I was in, in school. Um, and now really with the, with the rise of electric and hybrid cars and the change in the oil yeah. uh, dynamics where we saw the price go from over yeah. 100 bucks yeah. a uh, barrel to less than, it was like got down to like 25 bucks or something crazy. So it's a really super dynamic uh, situation. That said, population's still growing, yep. people are still consuming more and more and more energy. It's a pretty complicated environment. It, it is complicated, and I think, you know, on, on the customer side, our customers are much more demanding. You know, the old-fashioned utility, you know, just get your bill, that, you know, that doesn't fly anymore. We want to be the utility of the future for our customers and really be modern in how we interact with them and the services we provide so that they can make more efficient use of their electricity. And I think, you know, over time, you look at any industry, it kind of ebbs and flows and, and we're, we're, you know, you continue to, to look at that, but while you're, while you have all that information, from a generation perspective, we really focus on that safety and reliability. Right. We want to be there 24 seven, you know, to make sure that we're providing the electricity that our customers need, and that we're doing it safely and reliably day in, day out. And if we can be more efficient along the way, then we're going to enter in these kind of partnerships to do that, but, um, you know, it can be a complex business, but we got a lot of terrific people that work in it and we'll figure it out right. as we, you know, learn these new technologies. I think it's really exciting. And you're kind of like the refs, right? You don't want anyone to really know you're in the game. That means everything's going oh, smoothly. Yeah, and well, yeah. I just was th thinking, you know, wasn't that yeah. long ago in California, we were having these massive brownouts, yeah. um, scheduled brownouts, and, and it, it, it's, it suddenly throws into focus that you know, it's it's a big complex system uh, that delivers it, our power to us. That we, you know, we plug in, and yeah. the presumption well, is it's there. It it is, but I think um, I think the more people understand it, the smarter they get about you know where their electricity comes from and what are the decisions that you know different states are making. And but there were no brownouts in Illinois or Pennsylvania or Washington D.C. So I could tell you that much. <laughs> Those are your areas. Uh, I think. Yes, primarily. Absolutely. Okay, so Susan, before we let you go, as you kind of look forward and you come to an event mm -hmm. like this, yep. three thousand people. It's all about the technology yep. surrounding the infrastructure yep. and the power generation. 
What are your kind of impressions? What are you looking forward to? What, are we, what will we be talking about a year from now, two years from now at this show? Well, my, I really think that um, this field is changing exponentially. And as, you know, just from a few months ago to now, you see new technologies coming out. You see new startups coming with these great ideas. And I think it, it's hard to even imagine what it's going to look like a year from now, but there's no doubt that you know, this is the world we live in, and this is how it's going to, um, you know, this is how it's going to be. So we want to be, you know, at the forefront of understanding that and being able to take advantage of it. But I think it's really exciting. I've learned a lot just being here in a day and a half, and, and I think it's been a really exciting conference. And the Cubs won. And the Cubs won, <laughs> yes. <All right. laughs> Go Cubs. <laughs> All right, Susan, we'll All leave right. it at that. Thanks for taking a few minutes out of your day. You bet. Susan Landall from Exelon Generation. I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE. We're at GE Minds and Machines in San Francisco. We'll be right back after this short break. Thanks for watching.